Hey guys, it's Camille and today I'm trying out flexi rods for my first time and eventually my second time after I mess up, but we'll get into that later. And I bought these at some random beauty supply store five years ago and they've just been sitting here gathering dust so I decided to try them out and I really liked the end results. So here we go. So here's my natural curl pattern and here it is after washing and I'm misting it with just plain water to keep it wet since it's important to keep it wet while doing this for more defined results. To section off your hair, you're gonna need some scrunchies and then next create the part in your hair before putting the rods in cause it's a lot harder to do this later and it helps you figure out which way to lay your hair. Now section off like half of your hair with a scrunchie to keep your hair out of your face. It does not have to be exact. And then on the other side, you'll need to pull out small pieces for each curl. So I like to use one of these clips to hold the rest temporarily since it's the section I'll be taking up and down a lot. Each section you work with needs to be fully saturated and have product in it before putting in the rods. So one way you can do this is by starting with a section that has no product in it spraying it with water, focusing on the ends, and then adding in the product in just that section. I'm using just a little Aussie Three Minute Miracle as a leave-in conditioner since my hair tends to be dry, especially when wearing this style for some reason, so definitely don't skip this step. You want to spread that evenly and make sure you get the ends very well. And then next, use a lightweight gel like Eco Styler to help hold your curls in place while still being flexible, but without getting too crusty and flaky like a really strong hold gel would. You also only need a small amount of this and make sure to get your ends well. Make sure your hair is fully detangled so when you wrap it around the flexi rod, it lays flat and will come out with a perfect curl instead of including any tangles. So these are those random flexi rods I have, but I liked how the style turned out, so I bought two multi-packs of different sizes on Amazon that are easier to find and give me many more size options just for future use. Also, all of the products I used are linked in the description box down below so you don't have to look for them. These have a diameter of 11 sixteenths inches and they bend pretty easily, but not too easily. These are the two essentials for the ends of your hair you have to make sure you always do. So make sure the ends are perfectly laid and make sure that they won't unravel. One method is to start by twisting the ends like this, smoothing them down, and then rolling the flexi rod towards you using that hair to cover the ends you just rolled so they can't unravel and will stay perfectly smooth. Once you get it all the way up, you're gonna bend the rod on both ends to hold it in place. And you'll notice that the first bend I ever tried could have been done tighter at the top in order to drop less, but I figured out how to do that later, so you'll see that in a couple minutes. But for the rest of the side, I'm putting the exact same products in, but doing the whole side instead of one section at a time to save time, but also to make sure it's evenly spread out while I'm doing it this way. So then each section will only need to be misted with water when I take it out. I'm making sure the ends are very wet so they get perfectly laid because the whole entire style depends on it. And then I am curling towards my head, just like the last one. This time I bent the top part of the flexi rod towards the side that would start uncurling first to hold it in place better. And the way you bend the bottom one does not matter, so you do you on that one. I did the same thing three more times on that side, making sure to bend the rod towards the way it would uncurl and as tight to the scalp as possible to make sure that the texture at the roots is consistent. Now I'm doing the same process on the other side, starting the same way, making the first curl by applying product to just that section at a time to test and see if this curl comes out any better than the curls with the mass applied product. Turns out it doesn't really matter, so mass apply, save your time. Uh, but make sure it's freshly detangled Roll it the same way as usual and bend it t tighter than I did here. <laughs> I fixed it later, so it was less droopy. Please don't roast me in the comments. Okay, so fast forward through the rest where I do the same to this side, but some things I learned from doing this process were to make sure that you wrap your hair tight, but not in a way that would hurt or pull if any part of it was pressed on or once gravity is applied when you let go because that makes the drying process so much worse, especially if you're going to sleep with these overnight. And it's also bad for your hair to be stressed like that, especially when it's wet anyways. Another thing I noticed was that I didn't really care which direction most of these were curled for the body of my hair, 
but for the very top section, I curled it upwards away from my face instead of towards it because that's how I want the top part that's framing my face to fall. Now once everything is wrapped up, it's time to let it air dry. And I recommend you avoid blow drying if possible because the beauty of this style is that you can curl your hair with absolutely no heat damage. And also it might make the curls come out a little bit less sleek. So yeah, just don't do that. <laughs> do your hair like this on a day where you're not rushing or something. If you're going to sleep with these, wrap your hair in either a bonnet or a scarf to hold everything in place and avoid friction. I wore these to sleep, which was a big mistake. I hardly slept at all, so I should have just put them in as soon as I woke up and let them dry the whole day so I wouldn't have to suffer like that. But yeah. Here's another terrible thing to know. I accidentally deleted the footage of this finished look after spending hours doing this and losing sleep over it. So I literally did the entire process again just to show you how it looked. So here's round two. I think I did a better job on these after having practiced from the first round and now we're at the fun part where you get to unroll them and see your work and that beautiful first bounce because that's the moment when you'll realize it was worth all of this work mostly. I rolled some of these with long rectangular sections instead of squarer sections to see if I liked the way it curls and then later separates more because one problem I had the first time was that the curls ended up bunching back up together sometimes and I simply cannot stand for that. I somehow did not learn my lesson the first time and did sleep with these overnight again, but I had rolled the rods with that in mind this time so I definitely got a solid two hours in that night. I'm never doing this again from now on starting today. Just put them on in the morning. I really like how this wide and thin section looks when I take out the rod and it turns out it actually did make it easier to keep the curled pieces separate since they were spaced out vertically. Now it's time to separate out the chunks of curls into smaller individual curls. So you'll need to do this by hand because using a comb or brush will mess up the texture and you'll need to be more delicate than that. Plus, I think it's easier this way. One thing I learned the first time is that the curls clump because they're the same shape all the way down to the root. So if you can separate them at the roots, it's less likely to bunch back together and one way would be teasing at the roots a bit. And I found that I could get a similar but gentler effect like that if I took the sections from the ends and pulled apart from there so it separates down instead of starting at the root because it won't be an exact line and it will make the part where it meets the roots less stuck together. And that was kind of hard to explain so I don't know if that makes sense, but basically hold the ends, pull down, and it kind of teases the root a tiny bit. Just trust me. The curls look super short in the beginning, but it will loosen up a bit later and I kept the area around my part more flat since that's the way I want it to be parted. And then I pulled the curls down and a little bit outwards for volume. I saved the bangs for last and they came out so cute. And I did wear this with the intended side part, but then a different day I wore it with my bang centered and down and no real part. And I think it looks good both ways. So it's nice to have that option. I'm very impressed with how sleek and defined the texture came out and it's perfectly detangled right now, but keep in mind that each day you wear it, it gets a little less defined and I find that it has perfect definition on day two hair. That's the day where it has like perfect amount of volume. I love day two hair. <laughs> and then after that, I'm doing my edges with a stronger gel to hold them in place and using it to make the bangs hair go upwards and away from my face. So this is the final look. I am really happy with how it turned out and that it's a no heat look. That's kind of easy once you get the hang of it and find some self-discipline to start the process early in the morning so you can avoid the trauma from sleeping with these in. But if you like this video, you better subscribe and all my other socials are linked in the description box down below. I wish you all a happy, healthy life and I will see you in the next one.